those of you who see this program regularly know that it's a one of its kind program in South Asia, where we talk about range of issues on environment and climate change. And we have been doing it for more than six months. I think today we are having our 29th episode. We're having our 29th episode. And the topics that we are talk, going to talk about today, I think is, it's not a South Asian topics anymore. It's, it's a global topics. We all know that we are going through a extremely bad time, should I say, uh, a pandemic of, of horrendous proportion. And uh, today our topics is that is COVID hurting polluted cities more? Because we know in South Asia, we are having the countries and cities which are more polluted than other parts of the world, be it India, be it Bangladesh, be it Pakistan, many of the cities, also Nepal for that matter. And now we find that many of the cities, say Delhi, one of the most highly affected by COVID. Now, is there any correlation? Is COVID pushing more in areas where the people are already compromised, having compromised land slums? That's what we are going to talk about today. Let me first introduce uh, all of you before I start the ball rolling. Uh, also, I'd like to share this program is brought on by the Climate Channel Canada, also with the Plurals India and the No TV Bangla, a Bangladeshi YouTube channel which is having more than 8,000 subscribers. With that, let me introduce the panel for you. I have a fantastic panel across the world, should I say. I have with me Professor Abdul Salam. Professor in Dhaka University and uh, an air pollution expert, I think working with in tandem with various experts across the world. Welcome, Professor Salam, into the program. And I, also, I, I request I all of you to today unmute uh, 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 our unmuted uh, audio and external video so that it be comfortable for all of us. Uh, uh, let me also introduce Professor Hello. ASM Amanullah. Professor Amanullah is a professor of sociology in Dhaka University, having an experience in this sector for more than two and a half decades. Welcome, My pleasure. Absolutely, thanks, and it's a great privilege to have you. I have with me Professor Rajiv Dash Gupta, a, prof a professor of public health in Jordan Nehru University, Delhi, India, and also part of various key committees of government of India on, on this virus and also the vaccination. So we'd like to uh, hear a lot about the situation, the latest situation from Professor Dash Gupta. Welcome Professor Dash Gupta to the show. Hello and good evening. Absolute pleasure. I have with me uh, Onumita Roy Choudhury. Onumita is an environmental expert from Center for Science and Environment Delhi, one of the strongest and I think loudest voice on the agenda in India and South Asia, now also in Africa. So Onumita, it's it's great to have you back again in the show. We had we had jammed before. I think we'll be jamming today itself. Today itself. Welcome, Anumita. Absolutely. Greetings to everyone. Great. I have with me Professor Saira Abzal, Dean of Public Health and Preventive Medicine from Pakistan. Uh, she is from the King Edward Medical University, Lahore. Welcome, welcome, Professor Abzal, to the show. Hello. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Okay. Hello, my pleasure. Absolutely. I think we will be having a uh, lot of imports from you on Pakistan. Uh, we are also having Dr. Harshvardhan, Dr. Harshvardhan Puri, to be precise, is a consultant institute of chest surgery, Medanta uh, Hospital from Guru Gram, and also part of the Lung Foundation, and actually working right there to, to save lives at this point of time, literally. And I, I, I I really feel that uh, we have taken one hour from the patients, but I think this one hour should be beneficial for many, many people. So welcome, welcome, Professor Harsh Bardhan to the show. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Pleasure Absolute pleasure to have you. And finally, last but not the least, I think extremely important and perhaps out of this regional mix is Dr. Pallavi Pant. Uh, Dr. Pallavi Pant is a scientist from the Health Effects Institute and really would like to understand this macro levels health impact and the relationship between air pollution and uh, and, and this COVID uh, in a macro scale, but to be precisely on, on, on South Asia. I would I would, or don't want to kind of spend much time on that. Let me go directly. Let me go directly to uh, Dr. Hush Bhardhan Puri. But before that, let me reel out very quickly some data. Uh, 
Uh, the COVID situation at this point of time, when we are uh, sitting here, is, is, is that India, in South Asia, India is having about 19.2 million patients, and the number of deaths so far from COVID is 2,12,000, that is 0.02. Uh, point, point two, point two million deaths is there. Uh, in Pakistan, we are having 0 0.8 million cases. I am going to the WHO data, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, 0 0.8 million with 17,680 deaths. Uh, from Bangladesh, again, 0 0.8 million, but 11,393 deaths, and also Nepal and all. So that, that's a very, very uh, critical situation. So let's go straight to Dr. Puri. Dr. Puri, we are hearing that people are dying with the, without oxygen. And I think you are also facing the same today. And I am told that today a uh, 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 tweet by our uh, external affair minister about a patient, about a formal ambassador being uh, dead, I think in your hospital only, uh, because he, he couldn't get oxygen. So please let us know uh, what exactly the situation is. Uh, the situation here in Delhi and NCR in almost whole of the uh, Southeast Asia is very bad. Uh, we are facing it uh, right on our faces. The COVID situation is getting out of hands. Now, the problem here is that uh, the second wave of COVID, it is almost an unprotected wave. Uh, the the magnitude of this wave is has swept away all the medical facilities, doctors and everything. The, there is a, There are two, two things which I want to uh, share with the panel here that... Uh, there is a lot of difference between the first wave of COVID and the second wave of COVID we are facing. The uh, infectivity of the virus this time is much higher than the uh, infectivity of the first wave. The other thing is that the mortality in percentage is quite lower. Like the mortality in the first wave was something like 3% and the mortality is 1.8% in the second uh, wave which we are seeing. But because of the sheer number of people it is infecting, the absolute number of mortality is increasing like anything. The gross number now, is increasing. The gross number is increasing like anything. And the whole of the medical system is almost on the verge of a collapse. This collapse is because the oxygen required in the areas of India or places like Delhi and all those, the oxygen supply of whole of the country is uh, good enough. It, they have a, a good corpus of oxygen, but the reaching of oxygen from those plants to Delhi is getting difficult. So almost the whole of the city is choking. The hospitals are choking now. Uh, two hours before, uh, one of the bigger hospitals like Batra Hospital, the oxygen went off and we lost 12 patients there. One of uh, a senior doctor was also admitted. So you can imagine the fact that it is not the, not the common man or the uh, middle grade or the higher grade man. Everybody is suffering the burnt of this disease now. Uh, and Dr. Puri, Dr. Puri, sorry to interrupt you. I'm not... I don't want to get into the politics in this particular program, but yes. I really would like to know from all of you that when we are talking about an economy, which is one of the biggest in the world, mm -hmm. when we are talking about an economy which aspires to be a five trillion economy, and we are talking in 2021 that we don't have oxygen, we don't have oxygen plants, that's a bit of a criminal to me. Definitely, definitely. I'll agree to it. I, I don't want to get into politics of who did it, why did it was done. Absolutely. But, the, Absolutely. but the medical facilities, medical uh, structure in the country at the moment is in shambles. We are going for, for a war footage uh, uh, fight against this virus. And still, it's looking like we are losing the battle. I feel oh. helpless when we see Absolutely. patients in hearing front from of you, us diving. Hearing from you, if you say that we are losing the battle, then what the patients who are looking towards will feel i think that's an extremely extremely i think uh, situation which is I, I think it's really really bad so we'll come back to you dr puri trying to understand that whether you are finding the patients with compromised lungs are being more affected so air pollution playing a critical role or not but let very quickly i try to understand the situation from others about the covid situation before i i, I kind of trying to link with the air pollution part of it. Uh, Professor Dashgupta, as we had started talking about India, very quickly, where does India stand now? Uh, Dr. Puri, as a physician, talked about the Delhi's actual live situation. But what about the whole country? Uh, Dr. Puri made a very, very important point. And uh, with your permission, can I quickly project two slides and take about three minutes to explain or rather to I think, I think, I think, I think, I think you, you, if you discuss that, it will be better because the format okay. is like that. It's, it's, okay, it's fair enough. Kind of talk. Fair enough. 
uh, I'll, the reason I said slides is because it contains certain figures. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly explain what actually uh, what actually explains rather what what bears out what Dr. Puri said. Dr. Puri said two very important things. One is the oh, issue oh. of numbers. Why so many so large numbers? And he also said a very important thing that actually the mortality rate is low. Mm -hmm. Now this is this is both uh, both uh, uh, good news and a bad news, and I shall explain why. Now, what has what has really driven this second wave? The second wave is driven largely by two mutant forms: the UK uh, the UK mutant form, which was first uh, picked up uh, in end December. This largely contributed to the to the uh, surge in, 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 in Punjab through February, March. The other is the B1617 mutant, which was picked up early enough in Maharashtra, which drove the surge in Maharashtra through February and March. And why these two states are important is because till the first March, these two states contributed anything between 75 to 80% of the country's new cases. And what we see in Delhi NCR today, which is really the, the, the eye of the storm, so to say, uh, is, is most probably, and there is some evidence uh, of it, uh, of, this, of, of this region being, uh, be being affected by, by multiple uh, mutant forms. Now, both these and the UK variant was certainly known to be anything between 30 to 70 percent more transmissible than uh, than than uh, the, the, than the than the earlier form, and there is evidence that the B1617 or the so-called double mutant, but it's not a term to be encouraged. The B1617 is equally, at least equally transmissible uh, as the UK variant. Now, what it means. Uh, when, when something is more transmissible and less fatal, which is what exactly Dr. Puri is uh, saying from his uh, clinical uh, experience. So it's, it's, it's a simple epidemiological math. Uh, I'll just read it out. So if 10,000 people are infected in a city and each infects 1.1 other people on average, and this, one point, this, this, this computation comes from some, uh, another source, uh, from, from, from someone in the London School of Hygiene. So he is drawing upon the, the UK rates, no UK rates. So I'll read it again. So if 100,000 people are infected in a city and each infects 1.1 other people on average, which is the low end for the estimated rate of infection in England, then in one month, 16,000 people would be infected. And at a fatality rate of 0.8%, which was the fatality rate in England, and which you will agree is pretty low, this 10,000 people affects uh, ultimately ends up in 16,000 people and then 128 deaths. Okay. Remember okay. this 120. I don't, I, I'll just take one minute. Remember this 128 figure. Now, if the variant is more deadly, this becomes 192 deaths, which is uh -huh. roughly double. But the variant is 50% more transmissible, though no more deadly. This becomes 122,000 cases in a month and 976 deaths, oh which is 10 times the deaths, which is Scary. a whole lot of preventable deaths. And that's what we are exactly seeing. And half a minute more. Was this known or was this not known? Was this predicted or not? I would draw your attention to a Reuters uh, report that's broken today, which simply says scientists say India government ignored warnings amid coronavirus. Absolutely. So, so this is what explains what's happening in the last. Absolutely. Session. I think I'll come. We'll, we'll discuss that. Time. But let, let, time. let me very quickly. Uh, we have heard the kind of a scary situation in India from from both the experts. But let let uh, from uh, let go to Bangladesh, uh, Professor Professor Amanullah. What's the situation of COVID in Bangladesh right now? Uh, what what exactly is the situation? How how you see it? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Bangladesh is currently. Uh, is, uh, is is three weeks lockdown is going on in Bangladesh. And before the lockdown around three weeks ago, the, uh, the infection rate was around 24, 25%. And because of three weeks lockdown, 
on we see today around nine point the infection rate is going down and is around nine point six percent so it's not a strict lockdown but lockdown works it means the lockdown works and we reduce the infection rate from 24 percent to uh, nine point six percent that is the one thing so sample the size other, is okay. The sample size is okay, or it should be bigger. What do you feel? No, the sample size is sample size is not okay. Uh, the studies done by ICDDRB okay. and the and the projection by international experts says the number could be five to ten times more. Uh, one of the studies conducted by the ICDDRB, they found around sixty percent slum people in Dhaka city they are infected with COVID. But surprisingly, they are so asymptomatic and they don't go to hospital. Hospitalization uh, is not needed for them. And the death rate is much, much lower among the slum and the poor people of Dhaka City. So currently, the situation of Dhaka City is, looks like control, uh, like the oxygen situation is, is okay. Uh, the COVID bed around the hospitals, uh, there are some uh, b b the COVID beds beds are there, and at the same time the ICU management is also controlled. But the point is that uh, the air pollution level in Dhaka city is one of the highest in the world. As we you know, come to that, like like, 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 like Delhi. The mm. thing is that uh, the way the way you, you know the the festive season is coming. Eid is coming after 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 ten days. The way people started moving to the other parts of the country, and at the same time, the way the shopping malls and other places are open, and the public transports are open, and people are idiosyncratic, and people, the perceived susceptibility is less among so the that's beyond Dhaka. That's beyond Dhaka. Yeah, beyond and within Dhaka. Beyond Dhaka is lockdown is going on now in Dhaka. And, uh, go, Lockdown is going on, but the movement is serious. Movement is there. That's but the, the, that's the, 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 the shopping malls and shops are they, they open? They're they open because of the pressure, because of pressure of the shopping mall owners, because of the pressure of the other businessmen. The government had to open the uh, all those. So it's a compromise. It is a, it is a surprise. It is a surprise for Bangladesh. It is a surprise for Bangladesh. Despite opening everything, the infection rate is still around. Uh, 10 percent the I, numbers I, are hope, I hope the data is okay but, i hope the but, data is okay but, but if you ask me the question but if you ask me the questions there are lies and deceptions are always lies and deceptions are always there during the time of uh, during the time of covid the lies and deceptions are always there during the time of covid mm -hmm. uh, there is a question mark about the government the data, the data. Statistics. Okay. it could be 5 to 10 times more okay uh, let let me let me let me go to Pakistan, Professor Abjal. Uh, how is the situation in Pakistan? Yes, in Pakistan currently we are in the third wave, and this third wave is much different from the first two waves that we have witnessed before. In the first wave, we are able to control by certain important uh, interventions. I would discuss them later on. But was our smart lockdown that has been very successful. Home quarantine, home isolation policies that have been very successful. Moreover, we have certain other policies that led to the decrease in the first and second wave, like uh, school, schools and every institution, they were closed. And uh, the economy, that has also been balanced out. So there was an economy that has been generated. At the same time, the smart lockdown that has been implemented. So as you have said that uh, the figures are the total cases were more than 800,000 in Pakistan. Most of the cases were in Punjab. And uh, as Punjab uh, is one of the most populated uh, province of Pakistan. So we have more than 303,000 patients uh, uh, that were in Punjab only. When I talk about these cities, it is not the phenomena of the rural areas. So whatever we talk about COVID, we always say that the COVID is hitting the urban areas much harder than the rural areas. Mm -hmm. It is the disease that is believed to be of the old age. But in third way, we have seen that even the young people, they are getting the disease. Even the children, they have been admitted. And some of the uh, uh, children were specially presented with 
post covid syndrome that is just like kawasaki syndrome they have red eyes they have ulcers and they have certain other features that were not found in the first and second wave okay. so there is a phenomena of mutation i totally agree with the no, rest no, of the just a quick supplementary question you were talking about the third wave how it qualifies with compared in comparison to the second wave is it a bigger wave or is it a smaller wave uh, how it is in india we are currently having so called second wave professor dashgupta am i right we are going to, we are now right now having the second wave so we are, we are having a much bigger big, yeah. bigger spike than the first wave we are right so, yeah. and and professor abzal is absolutely right the punjab uh, sorry the, the, the pakistan uh, situation particularly in the punjab was driven by the uk variant okay so let right. me let me let me go back to professor abjal uh, so you are having third wave right now as you were saying so your third wave is compared to the second wave is it a steeper spike or is it a smaller spike what do you think no it is uh, as compared to the second wave it is steeper however when we compare it with the first wave it is approaching the first wave as uh, it was uh, having the highest toll of the deaths were in the first wave uh, to, uh, our cfr is about uh, 2.18 for pakistan and 2.8 for punjab and in punjab for uh, certain cities there is more deaths that have been reported from those cities okay okay fine i think we'll be try to understand from you later the the kind of whether the polluted cities are being more impacted but let me first now we have talked about the covid a bit now let us try to try understand the uh, air pollution component and can i start with onumita onumita as because we have started with the three i'm trying to get the full cycle in that order onumita what do you feel that the in 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 india delhi the ncr region the up are, are the most polluted region they are having the more polluted cities and now we are finding they are most affected apart from maharashtra and other cities definitely are there so what's your uh, kind of understanding anumita so join to first of all you know we have just heard from dr puri and dr dash gupto the changing pattern of the pandemic and why try Trying to understand that, so there is the whole uh, the medical uh, side of the story, but the other changing pattern that we are beginning to see today, and that's what I would like to link with the uh, issue of pollution. Is the spread of the disease across landscape? So during the first phase. and i just want to hint at that that the during first phase we talked more about the cities where we got the incoming cases like mumbai uh, delhi bangalore and then the migrants moving to uttar pradesh and uh, uh, bihar and west bengal that is the, was the nature of the spread Absolutely. but in the second phase it's lot more widespread and uh, and this kind of the landscape that is and we are constantly brought and widening now this also means that the beginning to notice resurgence of this in different micro environments in different air pollution situations and with huge vulnerability now we know that india as a whole and south asia i mean it's now called the epicenter of the global air pollution problem and we know that 90% of the population in this region don't breathe there that needs who guide you and pallavi will tell you more of this from the state of global air absolutely but we know that this region also has the highest exposure and has also experienced one of the increase over the years and what that report is also telling us that even after improvement in the levels in the region it's still among is the highest if to compare with the different regions of the world and today we are talking about even highest number of deaths among children and babies in this part of the world we are all talking 
talking about multi pollutant crisis. It's just not the tiny particles, but also all. That coming together, and therefore, now within that context, the point that I want to raise today that the NCR, larger interangetic plane, which we know are highly polluted, but we also have Kerala today, we have Maharashtra today, right? And we have to understand that you know it is just not the high, high levels in the interangetic plane, but what we breathe in other regions of the country are also not safe. So this complacency that is breeding in this country that, you know, in Mumbai or in Chennai or in Kerala, I'm not, you know, we are safe compared to the Indo-Gangetic plane. That myth has to go today. And so I just want to end with one point. That in this shifting nature of the changes, keep in mind our vulnerability. That both air pollution and pandemic happening when we have high level of comorbidity, high incidence of poverty, high large number of poor people, and also new poor, new poor because the economy has collapsed. So imagine this additive effect of all these factors. How much that is enhancing the risk? I think I think uh, Anumit has made an extremely important point that sometimes in media. We tend to go over overboard with a Delhi or, or a Kolkata going a record air pollution, almost getting up a statistic pleasure in reporting them. But at the same time, other parts of the country, which may be less than that, but are above the normal, as Anumata pointing out, and that impact is now being felt. That even th these people in Kerala and Maharashtra are not that safe because they are also having the compromised lungs. Before I go to uh, Pallavi to understand this macro relationship, very quickly from Professor Salam, what's, what's in Bangladesh? Do you feel this linkage of pollution and pandemic? Uh, thank you, John Mashum, and the uh, expert uh, the panelist today. Actually, I learned a lot about the, the whole situation in uh, IGP region. Uh, actually, If you want to tell of the air pollution bang for actually in environment representation, Bangladesh is the number one country for the, the host environment yes. and the highest number of deaths for um, uh, environment. And air pollution is the number one. Bangladesh number one, Pakistan number two, and India number three. Yeah, yeah, for record, exactly. For record. And uh, most of the cities, if you go for most of the cities. Um, in this region, in Southeast Asia, and is more specifically IGP, indo gangetic region, uh, we have highest number of uh, PM 2.5, highest smoke, and the highest ozone pollution, and all the pollutions are highest. So what happened actually in this region, the people, already Anumita mentioned that the whole region people, they are high, all the important organs already compared with the high exposure of air pollution. This is not the only situation, I think, uh, in this area, all over the world also, 90% people all over the world don't have clean air. Uh, what is prescribed by WHO, 25 microgram per meter cube. So 90% city people in the world did get, uh, inhale very poor air quality of air. So- Absolutely, uh, I, I, think that, that, I think you are almost kind of feeding to Pallavi because I think the point that you have just read is feeding to Pallavi. Uh, let, let me, I'm coming back to you, but let, at that point, because it's a very important point you have raised. Uh, Pallavi, what do you feel? Uh, Professor Salam just said that that not only South Asia, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, 90% of the people in the whole world are not being the clean air. So what's your assessment, Pallavi? No, I think he's, you know, he's very right. Over the years, we've seen data from across the world and and you know air pollution levels, including PM two point five, as you know Anumita was saying, and then as both Anumita and, and Dr. Salam said, not uh, not just PM two point five, but also ozone, other gases like nitrogen dioxide are very high in many parts uh, of the world, and 
if we just think about this disease, as you know, Dr. Harshvardhan said, and, and as Dr. Afzal and uh, um, you know Dr. Rajiv said, we know that the disease affects our lungs. We you know can sort of inhale it, get exposed to it in in different ways. And if we have already uh, been living in areas with high pollution, PM 2.5 is linked to respiratory diseases, heart diseases, ozone exposure linked to respiratory diseases. So for years, many people have been exposed to high levels of air pollution. Their your respiratory systems are you know, not as uh, sort of um, solid, you know, for the lack of a better word, there are people who have diseases, people often have, you know, breathing difficulties, even without COVID. So when a disease like that would strike at you, and it is going to impact your respiratory system, then you will be less likely or, you know, more, more vulnerable to it, more susceptible to it. And that is something we have also seen in other parts of the world. That's not just true in South Asia. I think in South Asia, the reason it you know becomes such a big, uh, important sort of factor is because our population levels are very high, and most, if not all, are living in areas with high air pollution. Not just in urban areas. Just think for a minute about you know parts of Pakistan and India, Nepal, Bangladesh, where we have crop burning, and there are villages where people get exposed to that smoke. People use wood and you know charcoal and and other things to cook food. Even the migrants awesome. that were going awesome. home from different places, that's what they were doing. So we are continuing to see those exposures. And, you know, there's a lot of data and numbers that are coming out now uh, relating COVID to air pollution. But even if we go back to the basics of what is air pollution impacting in our body, it's our lungs, it's, you know, other organs and systems. Uh, and what is COVID impacting, it is the same systems, the lungs, okay. our rest so, of free, you know, breathing. So that's, you know, that's, that's how we uh, link. That's impacting. Any, any, any study being carried out by uh, Health Effect Institute so far linking the COVID and air pollution? Any, any study which has been published or something, any data which has come up from any part of the South Asia in particular? Anything of that sort? Yeah, there have been a number of studies. I think air pollution scientists in different regions have been looking at this. Uh, from South Asia in particular, there haven't been, you know, health and air pollution studies as such. there are some going on right now, and hopefully we'll hear about them. But in Europe, in China, and you know, in US, there have been studies which have shown people who live in more polluted areas have a higher risk of having a more severe case of COVID if they get the infection or, you know, higher chance of death if they get infected with COVID. So there is that difference. You might get infected, but whether it's so, severe or... So Pallavi, sorry to interrupt death. you. This is not a theoretical question anymore. This is not a theoretical question anymore. The relationship <laughs> yeah, between the perfect. pandemic and yeah. pollution yeah. has been kind of established to a large extent. Uh, uh, yeah. So I, I, with yeah, that I just, context... Uh, uh -huh. I just want, to... yeah, yeah, I just want to add one thing. The, uh, there are dozens of studies uh, already completed, and mm -hmm. there are journals, uh, there are articles in the British Medical Journal, there are articles in the Nature Plus One. There is a relationship between uh, the COVID infection and the air quality of air pollution. But it is hardly uh, noticeable, any noticeable, any study in, in, in Bangladesh or uh, in, uh, I saw uh, in a, a couple of studies in India, but not uh, seen anything for Bangladesh or Pakistan. Okay. But there mm -hmm. are Maybe studies. having studies, Professor Amanullah, but those study results, I'm afraid, is yet to be, yet to impact the policy decision of government. That's where I'm coming. That's not, where I'm driving here, actually. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I'll be coming to that. Everyone. But let, let me first go to Dr. Hashwardhan Puri again, uh, before, from the macro to micro. So the, the experts are talking about the macro situation, linking the studies, linking pandemic with pollution. But when you are seeing a patient, maybe a patient whom you have been treating long for some lung ailments, are you finding the patients with the compromised lungs maybe within that comorbidity group are getting are being more vulnerable to to the covid spread so uh, i'll be telling you uh, i'll take two two or three minutes i'll be telling you three situations here okay. uh, when the covid was not there uh, last uh, uh, two years back and there was uh, there was a small uh, thesis one of my one of our pgs did 
in which we saw the uh, demography of the lung cancer patients uh, presenting to us so what we saw is, was that uh, the lung cancer patients 10 or 20 years back were more, much older they were all smokers they were all smoking cigarettes and all those stuff and the women population was around uh, 1% or something 1 or 2% and mostly 90 95% was males and 5% females or something like that so what we saw the shift in 2018 was that we have a something like 60 40 ratio of women is to men and um, men is to women and the younger patients like 20 to 25 age group was increasing and like 10 to 15% of the population coming to us with lung cancer was a non smoker they had they were the people who hadn't mm. smoked a single cigarette in their life so what was uh, it which was causing this shift so only thing which we could correlate as clinicians we are not epidemiologists we don't do studies as clinicians only one thing which we were able to correlate it to was uh, air pollution now it doesn't takes an einstein's brain to think that how would it would have happened basically what has happened is uh, am i am i audible this yes, is audible yes but, but, yes uh, yes what has happened is the only thing which has changed in the last 20 years except for cigarette as being the most common factor in uh, lung cancer was pollution this was one aspect pre covid now what what uh, experts, huh? yes what experts are talking talking about this solution when we went into the depth of it the pm 2.5 pm 10 and pm 1 we saw that this this uh, polluting uh, particles cross the blood placental barrier they cross the blood brain barrier and almost affect every organ of the body include the most affected is the lung then the neurological system mm-hmm. the cardiovascular system the muscles everything in your body your eyesight your obesity is being related to uh, pollution now so we can see that every organ of the body is affected by pollution if it happen if it is there we we know it as we kept keep it as uh, situation a and now we take covid as a as a uh, contagion or as a pathogen now viral disease like covid what it does is the most of the uh, effect of this uh, viral viremia is on the lungs and then it turns into a multi organ failure in, inside the icus which we see where we have involvement of the kidneys and the liver mostly it causes uh, uh, multi organ failure hepatotoxicity the renal failure and all the stuff so if we are knowing that the patient is already suffering from the burnt of pollution he is already having the okay. compromised lung functions compromised kidney functions which is proven by many studies because of the pollution okay. the, the people will get more affected by covid so, so basically say- what you are saying basically what you are saying from your experience that the people who are having compromised lungs are Definitely. being more impacted more quickly impacted and being actually more vulnerable overall yes yes i think i think extremely important from a person who has been treating them right on the hospital bed let me very quickly onumita uh interesting point but also the counter point may be that uh, are we seeing a different pattern uh maybe in maybe in the areas which are not being all that polluted anumita what's your take on that say 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 in 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 west bengal sundarbans or for that matter uh, areas which are far away from the this bustling or hustling cities uh, is it is it different uh, i would like to know also from bangladesh and pakistan but quickly anumita what's your point so join to to give something conclusive on this someone really has to do the study here Mm. which really hasn't happened the only study that i've seen from world bank that came out in february 2021 and that is for the country as a whole where they are saying that there is a causal effect in india between the long term uh, exposure to pm 2.5 and covid 19 deaths in fact uh, that study has said that 1% increase in long term exposure to pm 2.5 this to an increase in covid-19 deaths by almost 5.7% and fatality by yet another 0.027% something like that but of course they are also saying that this will have to be linked with underlying health conditions and other respiratory illness which are affected by air pollution okay. so it, uh, in the, in the in for the better pm 2.5 we know that including australia one okay. thing in things from pakistan before, yes, before i go over to uh, before i go over to uh, uh, 
uh, that uh, Pallavi, any quickly, very quickly, we are having about 20 minutes time uh, that any relationship between the particulate matter and the virus being established so far? Yeah, there have been some studies, but I think, you know, not not as inclusive in terms not of whether the yeah. particles are transmitting. But one thing which is critical also with the air quality discussion is that since the virus can be transmitted by air, can spread by air, indoor air quality and ventilation are very important things that we are not hearing as much about in South Asia. And I think we need more discussion on how to reduce the spread of the infection by focusing on air quality inside homes, offices, shops, you know, all of those places. So very quick mention of that. Okay, okay. I think that's another very important point. Very quickly to the Pakistan I perspective. Pakistan okay. perspective. Yes. What's your position? I think your position is also similar that the polluted cities are more impacted. I think somebody's mobile is being switched on. So that's, I think, uh, please take care of the mobile because it's giving some signals. Anyway, uh, uh, what's your point? Okay, from Pakistan, yes, there are various studies that have been published about the air pollution and the relation of COVID-19 uh, from King Edward Medical University and from Lahore University of Management Sciences. It has been published. What is the mechanism? As you have said, that particulate matter, when it enters in the respiratory tract, there are mucous membrane and on the mucous membrane, there are thin hair-like structures that are called cilia. These cilia, they are used to uh, engage that uh, particular matter so that it cannot go down into the lungs. Once the virus is present on these particular matters, those cilia, they can't work properly. So the virus has more chances to reach the lungs directly and causes pneumonia. And that pneumonia is causing mortality. So there is a very strong relationship of the particulate matter with having that virus being lodged on it and going directly to the lungs and causing a severe pneumonia and mortality. And in our study, we have found that 8% more mortality was found in those areas where particulate matter was more. And even one uh, microgram per meter cube in air pollution that was measured by PM has increased the mortality. Another thing that I have already told you is the rural areas are not very much affected by COVID-19 in, in Absolutely. Pakistan. It is one of the indirect evidence because in our rural areas, there is a lot of good air that is present and there is very little industry and vehicles and uh, oh. brick plants. I understand. And so mm -hmm. uh, rural areas, uh, they are uh, not... Not, very, not that much affected. Not that much affected. Okay, my third point is, uh, we know that Lahore is uh, among those 10 cities that are affected by pollution. And uh, when we uh, see in Punjab, uh, uh, Lahore has the highest pollution. Yes, yes, Lahore is extremely polluted in the global list. Uh, I think uh, your, your, voice is, uh, your voice is trailed off. Anyway, we, we, we heard you that Lahore is one of the most polluted cities. Uh, very quickly to Professor Dash Gupta, uh, it's very clear from hearing all these environmental experts across South Asia and also uh, Pallavi from Health Effect Institute that polluted pollution is causing or triggering or enhancing the impact. Now this, you were, you were talking about the variant, that UK variant and also the double mutant variant in India. I don't know that double mutant variant is operating in in Bangladesh or Pakistan? I yeah, it's in Bangladesh. Yeah, it's in Bangladesh. It's also in Bangladesh. Now, yes. many public health experts told me, and I actually have written on it, that this, this double mutant is kind of crossing the barrier in the nasopharyngeal region much too quickly and colonizing into the lungs. So that's again adding to the problem. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Dajanta, how do you see it? I don't know. <clears throat> I am no uh, expert on air pollution and health. Uh, but yes, uh, from a clinical epidemiology point of view, this observation uh, has gained credence. Uh, it is perhaps the case that uh, it's, it's infecting, sorry, it's involving uh, the lungs earlier. Uh, but then again, these are, these are evolving uh, scenarios. Uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 have, I have no uh, knowledge or expertise to, to be able to link it in any way to air pollution. Okay. Yeah. Fine, fair I think, enough. I think uh, we are having we are having about 10 to 12 minutes time. Let me start with Pallavi. I think this round is about the policy part of it. Because even before COVID, I had the opportunity to kind of interact very closely with the WHO head uh, on, on air pollution during the Madrid COP and other COPs as well, where he said that 
despite our repeated request, many countries, including India, are not very really inclined to take the air pollution control as a policy measure in a very progressive or a proactive way. So that was before COVID, and now COVID has Tell me how you see the policy response of the countries like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, despite being the most polluted cities in the world, most polluted countries in the world, are they, are they doing enough on the pollution count? COVID or no yeah, COVID? I think, <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's an important question that we can maybe spend a whole hour on. Um, just to put things a little bit in perspective, I think over the last 10 or so years uh, that at least I've been working in this field, there has been progress. So I wouldn't say that countries are doing nothing. Are they doing enough is, a, is a, you know, a good question to ask because there definitely are things that we could be doing today if we have enough data and information. And this is not just true for India, this is also true for you know, South Asia as a whole. And there have also you know, been instances where there are now increasingly demand or you know, asks for whether countries across this region can work together because the air in India, Pakistan, Nepal, you know, Bangladesh, it's all very similar. Our sources are very similar. And um, I think that in terms of policy action, one major takeaway that we should hopefully be, you know, taking from the COVID crisis is that air pollution is a health issue very centrally. And our public health planning, not just air quality management, Absolutely. but our public health planning needs to consider it as, as a way of, you know, as a sort of factor that is impacting health. And in the long term, our health policies need to acknowledge uh, air pollution. One additional point I just want to make really quickly in terms of, you know, the link between pollution and, you know, cities and um, sort of rural areas is also that there is this link between pollution and COVID. But okay. let's also remember that there are other factors like population density, which vary a lot. Yes, that's very so there's correlation, but let's not jump that this is causation necessarily. Exactly. I'm not denying that there isn't a link, but it's not the only factor that could yes. be driving these differences. It's not really a one is to one. It's not really a one is to one relationship. It's not really a one. Much more complicated to that. Uh, let me go by the ranking. Bangladesh is the most polluted country. So I'm starting with Abdul Salam sir. That do you feel that your your government is doing enough on the air pollution control policy, COVID or no COVID? Now COVID is added to the emergency part of it, uh, Professor Salam. Uh, uh, thank you, John Tudor. Uh, before that, I have something to preview uh, section, uh, Professor Raman. Very quickly because mentioned. we have to uh, wind up by another. Okay, very yes, I'm I'm going very quickly. Uh, there are some studies in Bangladesh also between the relation of uh, air quality and uh, COVID-19 deaths. Okay. And it's well correlated. Uh, this is one thing. Another thing I would like to mention, all of our discussion, our panelists mentioned here, there is this strong relationship between air pollution and COVID. But I believe uh, there may be some uh, points or some optimum condition. It's not directly related. Um, Professor Amanullah mentioned most of our Salam people, they don't have any mortality. They have... COVID patient, they have COVID carrier, but they don't have any mortality because they have a strong capacity to overcome the COVID-19. Uh, Though they are very poor living condition with very poor air quality, but they are not, there is not enough um, mortality. Maybe we should consider that one. They may uh, overcome the situation because uh, I think they already I'll Just, just, just hold situation. for a second. In fact, I just triggered because, uh, because Professor Salam Sam is saying it. There's a theory going on in India uh, in, in Kolkata, in Delhi, I don't know, Anumit, I can tell that, that the slum people, the people who, who are in the socioeconomically more challenged, they are being less impacted by the COVID. That's the general theory. Yes. And they are being kind of, that's what oh. Salam is just saying. I think it merits oh, okay. another day to discuss, but that's a fascinating point because I don't know. Then that it, 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 now, at least world yes. has come to a place when being being poor gives you some, some dividend. Yes, that is, at least that is now it goes down. Okay. Okay. Maybe <laughs> I, I can finish my second point. I can finish uh, sure. my second point. You mentioned about the policy thing. Yes, there is not a policy intervention. That's why our pollution increasing day by day. But there are a lot of steps have going on 
mm-hmm. uh, to control air pollution, not only in Bangladesh, in the whole region, in Ajit. Whole region. Uh, through, there is, you know, the Mali declaration is working, World Bank is working, and UNDP also working to mm-hmm. co- uh, combat the air pollution in the whole IGP. You know, in the winter uh, haze, it's come but from... Professor Salam, Professor Salam, just my, this is my kind of pointer, not to the Professor Salam, to all of you, that World Bank or other institutes, they can only kind of cajole you, guide you to form the policy. But end of the day, your government has to implement it. Your politicians yes. are have to implement it. So that's where the gap is. Yes. Are, the, you know, <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm not lie. I just uh, yeah. one minute. Uh, then yeah. I I think to control the air pollution, the whole IGP region, we have a strong relation. Uh, Pal- uh, I think uh, Pal- uh, Palavi mentioned that. Uh, the our pollution sources are same and we need uh, you know similar kind of approach to control air pollution but we need another things there is a huge transboundary air pollution from one country's pollution is coming in another country so definitely mm-hmm. they need a regional cooperation to control the air pollution you are saying, you are saying that you are saying that we are not giving you this the water but we are giving you air pollution uh, yeah in some <laughs> cases if you consider it winter time the, all the ch- pollution yeah. from india and china is coming over uh, okay, great. Nepal, then Bangladesh, then Bay. Absolutely. Bay. I completely agree with the transboundary the theory. I think coming, we have been talking yes, about it. Coming back to the back way. Okay. So, so, on the side, I would like to add something. To yeah, on the side, I would like to add something on uh, the policy issue very quickly. I just want to tell you for the last four or five decades, we developed so many policies, environmental policies, climate change policies within the country. But it is because of the neoliberal economy it is because of the capitalistic uh, economy uh, as everybody knows uh, it is because of the pressure from the industrialist it is because of the pressure from the urban elites it is very it is it is almost impossible to implement the policies by the government that's why the government always says that we have to do this we have to do that and government is positive in terms of controlling the air pollution but in reality in reality, in the field, really they can't happening. do anything. They, they can't do anything. Okay. They can't do anything. We don't know how to how to do it. This is this is a very complicated situation. Very quickly to Pakistan. Very quickly, we just having. Uh, I am just extending my five minutes just to have the all views uh, from Pakistan. Your policy. In Pakistan, as we say, that uh, journey of 1,000 miles start from a single step. So in Pakistan, we have two important policies. One is the Green Pakistan Policy Initiative by the government of Pakistan to make a green tsunami where more than a billion trees has to be planted. And uh, we in uh, every campus of the university, college, the students are involved in having plantations. The second is CPAP. uh, That is a very important uh, another policy that has uh, yet come, uh, yet yet has to be implemented, Mm -hmm. but it is in papers now. So we have two policies to control brick lanes, vehicles and all emissions, etc. Okay, the challenge is how can how can we transform the policy from the paper to practice? That's what the challenge is. Uh, Let's let's go to the India. Now, third in rank, Anumita, uh, what do you feel Indian government's policy on? We have NCAP and everything, but do you feel that's really working on ground, Anumita? First of all, Joyanto, we have to recognize today and as an air pollution quality community today, all of us fighting for clean air, that where we have failed miserably. And keep in mind the fact that year after year, we are getting the data from Global Burden of Disease and other studies telling us that 1.2 million people die every year in our country because of air pollution related deaths. And these are largely cardiovascular diseases, right? And mm-hmm. yet, never ever we asked our government and the health system that what is the health sector preparedness to deal with that, that burden of disease? If right. we had asked that question, then we would not have been fighting the pandemic the way we are fighting it today. All the statistics that Dr. Gupta gave today, you know, each and every number there is a personal story. And therefore, today when I'm going to talk about the mitigation, I'm going to start with the health ministry and not with the environment ministry. And I will say that health ministry has to strengthen its own health system response to air pollution challenge. Health-based criteria has to be part of the decision-making process. Health information, in fact, we need health impact assessment of regulations and health cost benefits to guide all our mitigation strategy and health mm-hmm. and ministry has to respond to all the epidemiological, toxicological, scientific research 
to bring strength to the air pollution solutions. In fact, and, and we need, you know, and then we need the exposure assessment, health impact assessment to exactly. inform policies. But after that, I'm going to say that after fixing this health sector and along with alongside, then we are going to say that the national plan air program on India now today requires a team. And we need to hold everyone liable and accountable in each and every air shed of India. So that oh. we meet the clean air targets. We have the multi-sector action for clean energy transition, uh, uh, you know, sustainable mobility, waste minimization, and at the same so time- accountability. Accountability has to come. Accountability has to come. But Anumita, unfortunately, when the ministers and the senior officials oh. challenge the figures being generated, so the mindset is that I'm going to challenge it. I really would like to counter that. Then this issue of action goes into the back burner a bit. Before I, I, I kind of conclude, I go to, before I conclude with Dr. Harshbardhan, but before that to Professor Dashgupta, very quickly. Professor Dashgupta, as a public health expert, very quickly, 30 seconds. Do you feel that, that, that the issue of air pollution being ever considered within the wider fold of public health or has it been left out? Professor Dashgupta. Oh, it has been left out, and and what Anumita said is absolutely correct, and I fully agree with her. Mm. Nothing I to think, add, in fact. I think it can't be anything more crisper and more kind same of. Same in Bangladesh. Same in Bangladesh. Left and out. I believe same in Pakistan as well. Uh, so yeah. Pallavi is smiling. She she knows that it's happening off all across South Asia. Uh, let me let me continue with 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 uh, Dr. Puri. Dr. Puri, having having heard and all these things. Do you feel, from the as a, as a doctor, because just now, Onumita, I think it's a very emotional way she said that, but Professor Dajuta is saying the number, there's a story behind each and every number. When somebody is dying, we are saying 59, 58. But when we're talking about the millions of death in air pollution, as because every morning in the paper, we don't see that number, we are not bothered. But today we are seeing the number of the COVID patients and COVID uh, kind of, Dead and the dashboard saying that this number of dead, this number of being affected. We are so bothered, but much more than that being affected and being killed by air pollution. But we don't care. So how, you, as a doctor, you want your government to to do practically on that? Uh, three point points, uh, concluding points from my side. What you are saying as a number, they are the patients dying in our hands. So what is a what what is a number for epidemiologist? They are the people dying in our hands. That's the one thing. The other, the public health spending or the government spending on the this time this pandemic has done what what it should have done. That it has the the system hasn't collapsed. The system was already collapsed. The it has shown you the face of the system that your system is collapsed. If it it gets overburdened by any of the pandemics, you are gone. The second thing. And third thing, till the time we, f we do studies to find a cause and effect relationship between these contagions and the disease, I think half of the population would have already died. So uh, it is a time to act is now. We have to make policies. We have to give something to our children. We can't let them die on the roads like this. What has happened to Delhi, Bangladesh, Pakistan at the moment. So it's my request to all the epidemiologists here. We have the figures, we have the uh, AQI levels of each city. Please do a study as soon as possible and pressurize these policy makers to do something on ground and increase the health uh, sector budget or public health spendings and do whatever they have to do because people save are really, lives, save really lives, dying, save dying on the roads. Yes, save save very, very emotional appeal from somebody who is there right there. Uh, Pallavi, I, I really thought about ending with him, but as because he raised that issue, one liner from Pallavi that how really you would like to turn this number into stories and the stories in the number, how we can stop this cycle being happening again, again and again, what we can do about it. I think we need to remember everything that everyone said here. And also as, as, as the air quality community, as Anumita was also saying, bringing together health scientists, clinicians, public health experts and policymakers together, not working in our silos, but all of us coming together to address this problem that's killing, you know, many among us, our family and our friends. And push so the government, push the governments to actually Absolutely. act on ground. 
the so-called yes. studies, the so-called reports, Absolutely. which are going to the back burner, being never being acted on. And we find that the actually the actions which are being taken are anti-pollution, anti-environment. Yes. So that does that doesn't work. So I think with that, I think it's a huge, with a fantastic panel, and we had a fantastic discussion. I believe you have all enjoyed it. But more than the enjoyment, I believe people are dying. People are dying all over the world. People are dying in South Asia. The doctor Puri person like Dr. Puri, seeing them being dead in front of him. And we find now, I think you have all agreed that it's enhanced air pollution is contributing to that. I, 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 continue, I completely agree, Dr. Pant, that there is no one to one relationship. It's a complicated one, but definitely air pollution is contributing to the upsurge of Corona. So sooner our politicians, sooner our ministers, sooner our decision makers understand it, act up on that, better for this world to survive. With that, we end up today. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you. You know, your, you know leadership your leadership on this issue, on this issue is a statement, is a statement to the people, people of your nation and, the people and of the people of every nation, people of every nation especially, especially our, young people, our young people that were ready, that were to, meet ready to meet moment. this moment. And meeting this, and meeting moment, this moment is about more, is about than, more preserving than preserving our planet. Our planet. It's, also about it's also about providing a better, better future for all of us. That's why, That's when, why people when people talk about, talk about climate, climate, I think, I think jobs. jobs. Within our climate, Within our climate response, response lies an lies extraordinary, extraordinary engine of job, engine of job creation and economic, and economic opportunity, opportunity ready to be ready fired, to be up. fired up. That's why, That's why I proposed, I proposed a, huge a huge investment in American infrastructure, American infrastructure and American innovation to tap the economic opportunity that climate change presents our workers and our communities, especially those too often have left out and left behind. I'd like to build, I want to build a, 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 a critical infrastructure to produce and deploy clean technology, both those we can harness today and those that we'll invent tomorrow. I talk to the experts and I see the potential for a more prosperous and equitable future. The signs are unmistakable. The science is undeniable. And the cost of inaction is, keeps mounting. The United States isn't waiting. We are resolving to take action, not only the, our federal government, but our cities and our states all across our country, small businesses, large businesses, large corporations, 
American workers in every field. I see an opportunity to create millions of good paying middle class union jobs. I see line workers.
Let me, before I go to Professor Fryer for an overview of South Asia, as because the Indian situation being raised, let me go to Dr. Ghosh, who is also the chairman of Bihar Pollution Control Board. Dr. Ghosh, uh, what is the situation? Uh, see, the scientists right are giving data. What's the ground level situation, say, in the state of Bihar and Arsul, uh, Bihar, the part now of the Jharkhand? What is the situation out in that?